how was how it all began? Um, I began playing when I was ten, and I was learning violin from a guy, well, from my school, and a guy named Lanny Feel, and I was getting really bored with that. And he was like, "But you can't quit playing." And I was like, "I'm not feeling this." And he said, um, "I've been studying with the." Uh, the Texas Playboys and Frankie McCorder in particular, and um, I've been like transcribing this stuff. And let's sit here and read through one, and then see what you think about it. And the first fiddle song I ever learned was Spanish Two Step. Um, and then from then on, I bought every. I was the only like, whatever ten year old with um, all the Tiffany's transcriptions, um, listening to them when I got ready for school and in the car. And anyhow. Um, in that band, I um, learned how to be a side person, how to show up and take direction and make sure my stuff worked and continued being a side person for other folks. And Billy Joe Shaver, I may or may not have been under the influence of uh, particular alcohols, but um, that we were playing at the same festival and I saw that he had a fiddle on stage but nobody was playing it. So I just jumped up on the stage and I got the fiddle and I played it. And then he said, would you like to play with me some more? Want some more shows? And I said, sure. And um, yeah, that's how I did that. And everybody else that I played with, I don't usually jump up on stage, you know. I don't know why I did that. In today's world, how would you, how would you describe your, your approach to playing the fiddle? Um, David Lindley meets Vassar Clements, meets more David Lindley, and I need another name of the person I'm thinking of. David Lindley meets David Lindley. I'm just in it, this is what is happening. I'm in a David Lindley phase, and I like to, I'm striving to make the fiddle um, more acceptable and more genres like rock and roll. It's easier to communicate with, for me with music because it, I feel like it was my first language communicating in. And a lot of times when I'm like giving interviews or talking to people about music, I find myself later thinking, I could have put that in a better way, but I never find myself doing that when I'm playing violin. The Texas Playboys allowed me to sing harmony with them on occasion. And um, the first time I ever sang in public was at a, a Texas Playboys, their Cowboy Christmas concerts, and I had to hold Leon Roush's hand, and then I sang A Little Walk With You, and I'll never forget that. And then, uh, fast forward, I got better at singing. I took some vocal lessons to try and um, s make that uh, goat goaty sound lesson, and I realized that that was never leaving, and I got comfortable with that, and then... Um, continued singing and I practice songwriting. I'm still practicing. Well, you've got an MFA in creative writing, so I think there's, yeah. uh, you know, there's more to it than just well, writing, I had, writing off the top of your head. True. I, I felt like I needed to go and um, study that craft as well so I could um, operate on something more than just instinct. I, I felt like I was operating solely on instinct and I'd find myself in trouble trying to make decisions like why does it take three hours to decide which preposition I want to use that's ridiculous maybe some training will help turns out it does help when you learn precision down to the letter so my piece of land is your most current album and most if not all of the songs on it were written during your pregnancy period yep so what was that what was that like that was um a wild time, you know, you're going through all the emotions um, that you go through um, and uh, you're wondering how do I make a new, like how do I, what is my self-identity, like what is my identity, I'm a musician, I'm a wife, and now I'm a mother, and how is that going to fit in with um, what I'm trying to do career-wise? Um, and um, the record came about as sort of like a self-reflection on that and just just letting myself feel things, and, um, and in, in a way, it was an insurance for myself, because if I made the record, then I had to go and tour behind it and keep my identity and keep my career that I want to have, and um, I, don't, I don't get, you know, there's not a whole lot of 
there are more now. There weren't a whole lot of women role models for me growing up that I saw had their t kids and traveled with them, and so it was a it was an insurance and it was a, it was a an expression of of love and working through things. Well, this is your fifth album, so it's not like it's the beginning of mm -hmm. your solo career, and uh, you do know how to command the spotlight when you're out there on stage, you know, le leading your own band, but you do it with a certain a lot of class and a certain degree of subtlety. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a tricky balance, isn't it? Um, I don't know. I, I feel like I, I can't really, I don't know. I don't know. I was, I started so young that I learned everything I learned about the stage from Bobby Boatwright and Tommy Alsop and all those playboys. So I feel like it's just trying to say, um, you know, he did a good job with those freckles. Uh, they're already there. <laughs> Well, finally, um, what have it? What would you say? What have you learned from your your partnership with Jason Isbell? I mean, in terms of musical partnership, but also just as two humans who are sharing your life. Um, I learned that there is a such thing as a true co-parent, and I learned that there is a such thing as a true champion, because that's what he is to me. Well, that sums it up pretty well. You don't need to elaborate on that. I don't think so. I think it's you know. If, if you need more information, you get his whole life's on Twitter. Yeah, that's <laughs> right.